Hello, I'm Ben Davis and welcome to this digital photo Lightroom tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the most of the tools in Lightroom so you can enhance any shot you take. I'll take you through how to control the tones and contrast, how to adjust the appearance of individual colours, and how to use the local adjustment tools so your images always look their best. If you're ready to get going, I'll begin. To start off, you need to import a RAW file into Lightroom. You can either import one of your own, or if you want to work along with the same image as me, you'll find the file treefrog.dng in the Start Images folder. So to import a file, all you need to do is click the Import button at the bottom left of the Library module, then navigate here through the Source options as to where your image is located. Mine is here in the Start Images folder. Just make sure it's ticked. We're going to add it to the library and click Import. As soon as it's in, you can just click on the image to select it and then hit develop to enter the editing module. Now that it's in, the very first thing that I want to do is apply any lens corrections to fix any distortions that are present in the image. So to do that, just click on the lens corrections tab, tick enable profile corrections and also tick remove chromatic aberration. Just to check that Lightroom has automatically detected the correct lens, just click on profile and just check that under model that it is the Tamron 90mm f2.8 lens. Um, if you're using your own image, then this information will be different. If there's no lens profile information in here, then have a look through these drop-down options and see if you can find your lens. With that done, the next thing I want to do is apply a crop to the image. You can select the crop overlay tool from the toolbar here, or you can press R on the keyboard for a shortcut. I'm just going to click on it to open it up. And all I want to do is to click on any of these edges of the bounding box and just pull it in a little bit tighter just to adjust the size of my image. I'm going to leave it somewhere like that. And then all you need to do is hit done or press return to exit the crop tool. To really get going with this image, we need to visit the basic tab where we can edit the contrast and the tones. So I'm just going to pop that one open there at the top, and also I'm going to open up the histogram so I can see a map of the tones that we have here in the image. The first thing I'm going to do here is just increase the exposure ever so slightly to around about plus 0.2, something like that. It's quite fiddly sometimes using these sliders for the minor amounts. So if you want, you can also type them in here just by clicking and then hitting enter to lock that value in. I'm also going to reduce the contrast quite significantly because this image is already quite contrasty because it was shot with the pop-up flash on the camera. So I'm going to take this contrast down quite a bit to around about minus 50. And whilst it looks a little bit washed out at the minute, I'm going to be able to add some of my own contrast back in just a moment. The next thing we have are the highlights and shadow sliders, and these control detail in those brighter and darker areas. And I want to get as much detail as I can in this picture, so I'm going to take the highlights down to minus 100 to bring out those detail in the brighter parts, and I'm going to take the shadow slider to plus 100 to reveal detail in those darker areas. And now we've revealed detail under here, under this leaf, and in the background here where you can actually see the blue t-shirt of somebody holding the leaf, and I'm going to want to get rid of that later on to keep the um, illusion of nature without having any sort of human interference in the shot. Um, but that's something for another step in a moment. But as I carry on here, we have the whites and the black sliders below. If you press J on the keyboard as you adjust these, you will get a clipping mask, and that shows you where whites and blacks are then losing detail. I'm going to start pushing the white slider to the right. I'm going to go quite far, and now I've got to around about the 50 mark, and you can see, if I go a bit further just to enhance that, you can see this red appearing on the frog, and that's where white is losing detail. So I'm going to take that back down because I don't really want to lose any detail on this image. Maybe a couple of tiny little specular highlights you can see here just around where the flash is reflecting off the surface near the eye here. That's fine. I'm going to leave whites set to 50. And then with the black slider as well, I want to take this down so I'm actually losing some black detail. And that's fine because I don't want detail in these parts. So I'm going to leave it somewhere round about there, round about minus, let's take it up to about minus 45, something like that, just so I'm losing a bit of detail in these very darker areas. But that's fine. I wasn't expecting to have detail there. Anyway, let's just put that to minus 45 exactly. There we go, and hit return. And then below here, below the tone sliders, we have the presence sliders. Now then, the only one I'm going to touch is the clarity slider, and I'm going to take that down to around about minus 25, just to give our subject a slightly sort of smoother appearance. I'm not going to touch the vibrance and saturation sliders, because I'm going to control the saturation, 
of the individual colors in the next step. So if you scroll down here, this is uh, to the HSL Color Black and White tab. It's also known as the Adjustments tab in Lightroom, but it's headed up HSL Color Black and White. Click on Color, and this will open up. Here we have eight different color channels, and for each color channel we have a hue, a saturation, and a luminance slider. So we can affect the tint, the intensity, and the brightness of each color. I'm going to start off with the hue for the red, so I'm going to take this down to around about minus 45, because I want to make the reds a bit deeper. And leave it set round about there. And one other thing before I go any further, I'm just going to press J on the keyboard once again just to turn off that clipping mask that we turned on when we were adjusting the whites and the blacks in the previous step. Okay, so that's the hue set for the red. The saturation, I'm going to increase this to make the, these reds more intense. So I'm going to push this quite high. I'm going to stop round about there about plus 60. And then luminance as well, I'm going to make these reds a bit brighter. So I'm going to take that up to round about plus 40. And you can see, if I just toggle this effect on and off, if we look at the frog's eye here, if I just zoom in, if I just toggle this on and off, you can just see that subtle difference it's made. We haven't affected the green around it. We've just made that eye more red. This is a red-eyed tree frog uh, found in uh, Costa Rica. And so let's make those eyes as red as they can be. Without going over the top, let's make it look nice and bright and intense. So next up, we have the orange slider below. I'm going to take the hue of the orange down to around about minus 25, and that's just making our frog's feet here a little bit darker in the orange rather than making them more yellow and making them a bit more reddy, because uh, that's the way I want this one to look. The saturation for the oranges, I'm going to take up to plus 25, just to make them a bit more intense. And the luminance, I'm going to increase as well and set to roughly about 25 as well just to make the oranges a bit brighter. Below we have the yellow, so I'm going to just scroll down a little bit and then push this hue. I'm going to take the, I'm going to go this way, make the yellows a bit more green, so that's the body of the frog. It's going to be looking a bit more of a vibrant green color. So we will leave the hue set round just a little bit less than that, I think perhaps about plus 30. The saturation I'm going to increase as well, make that quite intense. Keep going, perhaps about plus 40. And for the luminance, um, let's take this one down a bit just to darken that frog off a little bit just to give it a bit more weight in the picture. There we go, minus 20, something like that. Now then for the greens, I'm going to leave the hue alone because I don't want to affect the colour of the leaf too much because it already looks a good natural colour to me. But I will make it more intense and increase the saturation to plus about 35. And the luminance, I'm going to make that leaf a bit brighter as well. So I'm going to leave that set about plus 35 as well. And then just to see what these sliders have done, we can toggle this effect on and off, and you can see how we've really made this picture much more vibrant and punchy, just by controlling these individual colors. The next thing I want to do, though, is to get rid of these background distractions. You can see that pink there is someone's thumb holding the leaf as the blue t-shirt, and also some shadow detail in here that I don't want. So we're going to use a graduated filter. You can select it from the toolbar by clicking on it, or press M for a shortcut. And then you get these options, these sliders here that open up in this new panel. Some of these may have settings already in from a previous time the tool was used. Just double click effect to reset them all back to the zero position. I'm going to use this graduated filter to darken these areas. So I'm going to set the exposure down to around about minus 1.3, something like that. And I'm also going to take the shadows down to minus 100 so we lose all shadow detail. Then I'm just going to click and drag a graduated filter with quite a narrow feather area and I'm going to move click on the pin to move it into position and then if you want to change the angle you can just wait till you get those arrows there if you hover your mouse outside and just gently move it around just pull it down a bit further because I want to cover up that thumb it's a little bit fiddly and then I haven't quite covered it up with these settings so if you right click on the pin and click duplicate that will just double up the effect and I'm going to do it, just change the angle of this just to there we go. Now I've just covered up that thumb that was creeping into the leaf there. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm going to click and drag just another graduated filter. Just pull it up so it doesn't clip the leaf too much. I don't want to darken that. Just change the angle slightly and then right click and duplicate just to make sure I've sent all of that into deep, dark shadow and no detail is poking through. With that simple step done, all you need to do is hit done or click on the graduated filter in the toolbar once again to exit the tool. The next thing I want to do is use another tool here from the toolbar. It's the spot removal tool. And I'm going to use that to clean up any of these unwanted sort of distractions in the image. If you take a close look, you'll see on the nose of our frog here, this little clump of soil or debris or whatever it is, and a few other little lumps. And if you scroll over here onto the leaf, there's all these little bits of 
jungle detritus, whatever they are. So I'm going to use my uh, spot removal tool just to sort of copy areas of pixels over the top of these to hide them just because they're a bit of a distraction in the image and I want this to be nice and clean. So I'm going to start off with the piece here on the front of our subject. So I've just zoomed in just by clicking on the image with my mouse. I'm going to select the spot removal tool. You can press Q on the keyboard for a shortcut if you want. I'm just going to click that and open that one up. I'm going to make sure that the tool is set to heal rather than clone. Just so then it's sort of making a blend of the pixels rather than just stamping a copy from one place onto another. We'll get through the results this way by using the heal setting. You can adjust the size with the scroll wheel of your mouse, uh, perhaps adjust it to suit. I'm going to set my size to somewhere around about there and at 36 just so I can get a good sort of brush there to paint over that area. I can adjust it as I go along as well depending on the size of the item I'm wanting to hide. I'm going to set feather to around about where it is, probably about 35 or so, and opacity to 100. Now that I'm already zoomed in and with this tool, uh, you can't click and drag on the image, but if you hold down the space bar, you get this hand, so then you can click and drag it to navigate your way around. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do now here is just paint a brush mark over that first blob, and Lightroom automatically detects a place to copy the pixels from. Sometimes it gets it right, sometimes it doesn't, so we have to fix that. So I have to go and get this source area and move it to somewhere closer where there's a similar level of tone and detail. Um, and then we'll just check that Lightroom's doing an okay job. If I can perhaps move this somewhere even a bit closer just to get it matched up. Somewhere like that looks good to me. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to adjust the size of the tool there just with the scroll wheel on the mouse and just paint a little blob over and move the pin just to get it in the same focus detail area. And I'm going to hold down the space bar on the keyboard and move across. And then we're going to select this area and then once again just move the pins. I don't have so many of those specular highlights in there. Okay, I'm going to carry on and complete this process all over the image. Just these few little details here on the frog's mouth and on the leaf. And I'll join you again when I've completed that in just a few minutes. Hello, welcome back. I'm just finishing up here with the last few little blobs that I want to remove. And I'm about done. So I'm just going to zoom out of the image by pressing Control and minus on the keyboard. And I'm going to press it again just to zoom out fully. And you can see all of these little pins, or all of these areas that I have applied the spot removal tool to. I'm just going to hit Done to exit that tool. And you can see that all of these little bits of debris and detritus have gone. And if I just press the backslash key on the keyboard, this shows us a before version of the image. This is before any edits were made at all. And you can see that here along the leaf, along the front of our subject here, that you've got all these little bits of uh, detail here that have now vanished using the spot removal tool. And it's pretty seamless as well. It only takes a few minutes to do a little bit of care, but it was well worth it just to clean up that image here. I'm also going to now get this back on full screen. So if you just pop this panel open here on the left hand side, I'm going to click on fit rather than fill. So then I've got the whole image back on screen. The next thing I want to do is to enhance the detail of the image. So that's done in the detail tab. So if you scroll down to that one, open it up and just move up. So we've got this window here. This zoom window here shows us an area of detail and we can select an area of sharpest detail like this part of the eye just by clicking on that target tool and then go and selecting a part of the image to fit inside this window. For the sharpening, we're going to start off with the amount slider. In fact, I'm just going to close that histogram at the top there just to get a bit more in this view. The sharpening slider, the amount I'm going to increase quite high. I'm going to set amount to 95, somewhere like that. I'm going to leave radius and detail set where they are at 1.0 and 25 respectively. And the masking slider, the last one here, this controls where sharpening is applied. Now we don't want to sharpen the entirety of this image. There's no point in sharpening areas that lack detail, as we're only going to make detrimental effects to the image quality. So if you hold down Alt on the keyboard as you move this masking slider, you can see an edge mask of where it's getting sharpened. Now the black areas aren't, the white areas are. And I want to set this just so we're sharpening some of the stronger areas. I'm going to set that just at about 80, somewhere like that. So we're only sharpening these parts of the image. Below we have the noise reduction sliders and that's just going to combat any noise that's present in the image. If I just open this up again, you can see the ISO was 500 when this image was taken. So there might be a little bit of noise present in here. So we're just going to increase the luminance slider 
just to round about 15 just to smooth out if there is any grain in there just to keep the image quality as good as it could be now then while I've sharpened this image uh, I actually want to blur some of it just to help focus attention even more on that nearest and sharpest eye and I'm going to do that with the radial filter you can grab it from the toolbar or press shift plus M on the keyboard for a shortcut and here we have these same sliders that we had with the graduated filter and you can see that these sliders are actually in the same settings as when we had before so to clear this just double click effect and they've all gone back to the zero position I want to take the sharpness down to minus 100 on this uh, just because I want to blur everywhere outside of the radial filter and so I also need to make sure the invert mask is not ticked so that means the effect is happening outside of the shape that I draw I also want to set the feather to perhaps around 50 something like that so I'll leave it there and then all you need to do is click and drag a shape over the image here uh, now it's not in the position I want it to be so you can just click on that pin to move it into position to make it a little bit bigger so everywhere outside of this radial filter shape is having minus 100 sharpness applied to it. that means it's being softened and it will gradually feather out into the center of this uh, shape uh, so we're not taking away any sharpness from the center here now just to double this up you can right click on that pin and click duplicate as we did before with the graduated filter just to enhance that effect just to soften those edges even more to make the viewer's eye be drawn even more to the center of this image to our frog's bright red eye and with that applied once again just hit done at the bottom to exit that radial filter tool the final thing I want to do to this image is just to add a dark vignette to the edges just to help hem it in even more give it that sort of night feel as if we're intruding in on this uh, frog's habitat so just open up the effects tab down near the bottom here under the post crop vignetting highlight priority we can take the amount down to around about minus 40 to add quite a bit of darkening to the edges of this frame the midpoint I'm going to take down to the left as well I'm going to bring it further towards the middle and leave it set round about 10 the roundness I want to take down as well to make it a bit more square you can actually hold down alt on the keyboard when you're using these to see really what's happening with these uh, sliders but I know that I want my roundness to be around about somewhere around about there about minus 50 so I'll take my finger off the feather I'm going to set to 100 just to give it a softer edge to the effect and I'm going to leave highlights where they are at zero and that's it that's all I want to do to this image if I just press the backslash key once again we can see a before view of the image which is just a fairly flat and lifeless dull snap really you've got the distractions all over the background with the the, the blue of the summons t-shirt the detritus here on the on the frog and on the leaf the colors are very flat and muted uh, the contrast is no good if I just tap the backslash key once again it will take us to where we are currently with our really vibrant and intense and much more impactful image so with that finished the final thing you need to do in Lightroom is export your file that's because we've been working on a raw file and as it's non-destructive editing nothing has actually changed until we lock these settings in by creating a new file usually a JPEG so that's what I'm going to do here so I'm going to click file at the top and then go to export uh, export location we've got the specific folder you can choose you can click choose to navigate somewhere else currently it's set to the desktop and that's good for me so I'm going to leave it set there you can give this a custom name I'm going to call this tree frog edit just type in the box there Just scroll down here we have the file settings you've got the image format currently it's set to JPEG there are other options as well if you prefer but I'm going to leave this set to JPEG just because I want to stick this up on Facebook and then I want to take the quality down I'm going to untick limit file size to 4000k 4 megabytes I'm going to take the quality down from 100 to about 90 just because I'm then going to save quite a lot of disk space it's going to be quite a lot smaller file but we're really not going to notice the difference in quality between 90 and 100 on these export settings and that's all I need to do so I'm going to hit export at the bottom here and that new file will be created on my desktop well that's it for this tutorial I hope you found it enjoyable and informative and please do make sure you give these tips and techniques a go on your own images and see how your raw files can really be enhanced with just a few simple steps so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.